Steve and Candace, the world's foremost unknown swim bloggers, we're here in LA for the Golden Goggles. We're in the hotel and we're gonna see if we can find ourselves some swimmers. So let's go see if we can find one. This door looks promising. Well, I was picking out my outfit, but we can talk a little bit. So we're here with Eugene Godso, who has very graciously allowed us to interview him today. So we have a few questions for you. Uh, our first question is, obviously you just you know came back from a great showing at the World Cup, and it seems like the schedule is pretty hectic. So can you tell us what that's like and how you deal with it? It is. It was really hectic, actually. I've never been to a series of meets that was like that. So I went to Singapore first, and the pool is about 45 minutes from the hotel. So that takes a toll on your, on your mind and your heart. And then Tokyo final started at 3.30. So like one of the days we finished lunch at you know, 1.45, went to the hotel, grabbed a different suit and went back to the pool. And then Beijing, awesome facility, that's where Michael set, you know, a bunch of records they got. Water cube. The water cube. Everybody was pretty exhausted, like talking with Chad McClough, that was his eighth, eighth meet. He's like, all right, one more race, one more race. Swimmers, those short distances are kind of mind blowing. Like all the distances are mind blowing, but that in particular. So, can you tell us a little bit about what goes into a race like that? You just try really hard. <laughs> uh, I mean, the 50, I swam it a good amount of times over the past year, and every time I felt like I was learning something new. It's a really, really unique race, the 50 fly, because everybody in that final. I think I was the only person to go faster in the final than the semifinal. I think a lot of that has to do with if you go 100% in the 50 fly, you're going to slow yourself down. So you have to find that like 98% effort range, which somehow I lucked into like being on the outside lane. I think I lucked out on that. So it, it worked out. It did. It, I think the, the most nervous I was was the prelims of that race because I was in the ready room and I'm looking around at all these guys. And, just a bunch of European and South American guys that are like 6'5", like 220 pounds, like, I swim the 50 fly. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. I'm going to do the 50 fly too. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> so now we're going to ask you some non-swimming questions, and a lot of people have been interested in you and your career, but we don't know so much about you, Eugene, person. Who am I? Who are you? So we're going to ask you just some simple questions, sort of get some more, get some more information. I'm ready. What's your favorite color? Green. What is your favorite band? Mm. Moving Mountains. Ooh. Heard of them? No. Mm. Tell us more. Um, they're like indie rock, progressive rock. I like a lot of different genres yeah. of rock, and they they do a lot of different kinds of a lot of, a lot of different styles in one. I, I love them. Cool. What is your favorite food? Sushi. I like Saba the most. I basically love eating Japanese food in general because it just reminds me of my home cooking for my mom. So I was in Japan, I'd go to the airport and you know, I'd have a two hour wait, so I'd just go to this little hole in the wall, Jap hole in the wall Japanese restaurant. Just like, ah, sushi. What was the last good movie you saw? Last good movie I saw? I'm gonna say Man of Steel. And it didn't get the greatest reviews, but, you enjoyed it. but I enjoyed it. And Hans Zimmer is the man. It was an awesome soundtrack. And I was moved. A I, have, bit. I still haven't seen that one. Now I definitely Moving Mountains, Man of Steel. Got mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. What was the last good book you read? Mm. I just reread Ender's Game because I want to see the movie. It was like one of my favorite books growing up, and just brought back some good memories from childhood. Awesome game or awesome book about Ender's Game. Um, we've noted a lot of uh, different pre-race routines from a variety of stores, so could you tell us about yours? My pre-race routine? Without giving any like trade secrets away. Okay, good. That's what I was worried about. Um, I'm pretty laid back, like very, very laid back until maybe like 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the race, and like I'm in the ready room, and um, then I get like really zoned in and really intense, and so yeah, I like try the Aaron Pearsall approach as much as possible. 
and then like the race gets closer, I'm like, no, you gotta get serious. It's the night. And then I switch over, and then I get pretty serious. And yeah, that, that's been one of my big things is just trying to enjoy the moment. And I think I did a really good job of that at Worlds. Is every time I walked out, I really tried to like look at the crowd and like feel the energy and remember the moment because that's what I didn't like in 08 trials, Olympic trials. I went, I just like swam, and I was like, that was cool. What happened? And 2012, even though I, I didn't make the team. I like really embraced walking out the finals, like seeing the fans, seeing my parents up in the up in the stands, and just like kind of smiling and enjoying that. So, what is that experience like for you when you go out there and everyone's screaming your name? And it's crazy. I mean, you're not used to that at a swim meet. I mean, you feel like you're an NBA star when you walk out and they say your name. They like show a big flag, you know, United States, and you see like a big USA section with flags, and it, it's really moving really inspires you not just not just for that moment but I think it kind of justified me staying in the sport after I missed the Olympic team and right. just that that really good feeling of like I'm where I, I think I belong mm -hmm. so to switch gears a little bit we heard you're a big gamer can you tell us a little bit more about that I've been a gamer since I was a little kid um, used to watch my dad play some games I used to sit on his lap and that probably is what got me interested mm -hmm. um, I'm a big computer gamer. Um, I, I played a lot of Counter-Strike in middle school and high school, and right now I'm playing League of Legends. Which I is... just heard that there's like a very big tournament that happens. Is that something that you... Oh, there's a very big tournament. Is that a multiplayer? Situation? Yeah, it's a multiplayer okay. game on the computer. They actually had the World Championships here at the Staples Center. Um. Pretty recently, like a couple months ago, and they like sold out. It's, it, I think it's the biggest. But you were on the World Cup. So you were yeah, I just, <laughs> you know, for some reason the schedule didn't work out for me to go play there. So how do you balance your time, like, with your very serious gaming and your very serious yeah. swimming? I'm just very serious about everything. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think it breaks up my my lifestyle pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got swimming, which I like really focus in on for a couple hours. And then I can go and play some games, and it's, it's a pretty competitive game, but at the same time I'm playing with friends, and we're talking over Skype, and it's funny, and then I'll just, you know, record some music for a couple hours. So I got a lot of different things going on throughout the day, and I think that's good, because for a couple years after I graduated school, I was like swimming, 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 thinking about swimming, watching swimming YouTube videos, and I just, I think I kind of burned myself out, and that was part of me not making the Olympic team last year. Sad. that? We know that you recently competed in Rio with your friend Adam Anya, who's one of our favorite people. Oh, yeah. We asked Adam if he had any messages for you today. Okay. And he said, quote, he's looking forward to your collaboration piece when you visit in February. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Would you be willing to elaborate on this? Okay. So, uh, Manya, I think he was voted coolest swimmer in USA Swimming, right? Something like that. I mean, to us, yes. Unof unofficially, officially. Mm -hmm. um, but me and Manya are pretty good friends. We met a few years ago, and we just kind of clicked. And um, he's a very big fan of music, and he plays some music. He plays a few different instruments. And I went and visited him last year at, at the meet. And we were just so focused on having fun playing music at his house, because he has this, this attic, and he has like a drum set, guitars, different instruments, an accordion. So we would just like, after prelims, we just rush back play music for a few hours, go to finals and swim. And then we come back that night, just play music all through the night. So we'll have to come up with a little collab song. If there's any requests, let us know. So you're gonna do like an original piece or do you wanna do a cover? Ooh, haven't thought about that yet. We could do an original, but we need some inspiration. Mm. Something needs to inspire us. We'll try, we'll but try. we don't know if we'll we be able to do that. So just on the note of sort of getting to know you, we wanted to know if you would be willing to share three things that people might not know about you as of right now. Okay, so I'm half Japanese. Uh, my mom's Japanese, so I have, you know, the Tiger Mom, um, <laughs> which is great because my middle name's Daisuke and I was at the Tokyo World Cup a few weeks ago and I was getting my award for one of the backstroke events. And they, instead of just saying Eugene Gatso USA, they said Eugene Daisuke Gatso, he's half Japanese, his mom's from Hokkaido, and the crowd was like, what? And they like, went crazy, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, that was really that fun. Was awesome. Um, and that probably ties into my love of sushi. Right. Um, I just said I'm a pretty big gamer, so I, I wouldn't even say closet nerd, I'm a nerd. And oh, then, loud uh, and proud. Loud and proud. 
And then music plays a huge part of my life. I've been playing music for a long time and just recently getting back into recording and doing some YouTube videos. So that's kind of where I want to take the next few years. Check it out. Check it out on YouTube. Subscribe. We also heard usual. that you play the piano. Could you tell us a little bit yeah. about that? Yeah, so I've been playing piano since I was seven. And I went through my typical rebellious years when I was like 14 and 15. My mom said to go practice. I'd just go bang on the keys because I didn't want to play. And it kind of fizzled out. And then I think I went on YouTube when I was 17. I saw somebody playing the Mario theme on the piano. Right. Like, dun, 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 dun. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. So I like went, printed the sheet music, sat down on my piano, spent a few weeks learning it, and that was kind of my reinvigoration into piano. So since then I just would find songs that I wanted to play and learn them and then um, I didn't study music theory but I kind of just like re-got re it back and mm -hmm. so right now I, I'm writing a lot of my own music and doing a lot of covers and just trying to do a whole lot with piano and recording. When can we hear some of the music that you've been recording? Well, I have about five or six videos online right now with my band Take Your Mark which was Greg Pearsall. We were, what? Nothing, we're just getting excited Ooh. for you. But, well now it's sad because we were in Charlotte together and we recorded some videos and one of our videos had I think like 40, 45,000 views right now. Wow. Um, but he moved to Florida, I moved to California, so the van broke up. So it's um, like a long distance relationship. It's a long relationship. distance relationship. We'll probably, we still play together, ideally, but we can't do anything consistently. But, um, doing some recordings now, finished up a few recordings last week, finished the first video. And I'm thinking that video is going to come out either Tuesday or Thursday of this week coming up. And I'm going to try to get a, a video or two out every few weeks. Cool. So that's something to look forward to. Jumping back on the wagon. Alrighty. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. We just have one more request. And as you might know, we're very interested in the fashion of our favorite swimmers. So do you mm -hmm. think you might be able to give us a sneak peek of what you're going to wear to Golden Goggles tonight? I don't think anybody's seen it yet. I can show... Even Candace. Yay! And the world. My attire for tonight. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so we're gonna go check that out. Hey everyone, so we're back in Eugene's room and he is gonna give us a sneak preview of what he's wearing tonight. Guys, be honest, what do you think? I think we need to dissect the suit a little bit. I'm enjoying the lighter blue color. I think that looks good with men who have dark hair. I'm also enjoying the plaid, which I think is a very dapper look. Oh, I really like the lining too. Mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that. And the pop of color, very nice. It's cocktail, not black tie. You can kind of get away with a little more. So I think, fun, gentlemen. exactly, it's a party. But I think overall, we're gonna give it four thumbs up. Four thumbs up. Yeah. I feel good about it now. Yeah. So he's gonna be looking good. We're, we're pretty excited about it. Yes. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with us today and, and showing us your very, very nice suit. Thank you very much for hanging out with me and I'll see you later tonight in the suit. Yes. Perseverance. Per perseverance. The Perseverance Award. <laughs>